Hey guys, this is Patrick from STH, and today we're going to talk about this switch right here, which is the Dell S5248FON, and this is one well-hung switch. Now, this is not a well-hung switch because it has 200 gigabit ethernet ports. Oh no, this is a well-hung switch because it's literally hung here. I can't wait to see the comments on that one. But primarily, this is a 25 gig ethernet switch. And so what we're gonna do in this video is we're gonna talk about well this switch and talk about all the kind of cool features, why it kind of stands for open networking at Dell. And I'm pretty excited to get to walk you through this. And before we get too far, yes, you probably have seen this switch before. If you've seen, for example, our American Mega Trans video, that's American Mega Trans, not American Mega Trends. This definitely does have that American Mega Trans label, but American Mega Trends and Dell have said it is perfectly okay. And so I know a lot of folks were commenting and saying they didn't necessarily know if it was okay. Other folks said, what's the big deal? And we are gonna take Dell and American Mega Trends at face value, and we're gonna assume that everything is okay with this switch because they said it is. Because what I really want to do is go through the hardware on this switch. Now, there is one other little caveat here, and that's the fact that the front of this particular switch that's in front of me and that's being hung has been damaged previously in shipping. We actually run another one of these in the STH lab, and I was going to take a picture of it last week, but I never made it to the data center because uh, I was filming something else that you're going to see pretty soon. But we're just using this one for photos, and so yeah, this one has had a hard life. But with that, let's get to the hardware. Okay, now when we look at the front of the switch that was damaged, we're gonna see the fact that we have a total of 48 SFP28, which are 25 gig ethernet ports. And that's all well and good. And frankly, we saw this on the previous generation as well. We actually did a video of the S5148FON, and that was a previous generation. We're gonna talk a little bit about the differences and why this is actually a much better switch and one that I would definitely recommend because, well, I think it's just better components. And we're gonna talk a little bit more about that as we go through the switch. But one of the immediate ones that we're gonna see quickly is just when we get to the higher speed uplink ports. We're gonna see a total of four QSFP28 ports, and those are really your 100 gigabit ethernet ports. But there are these two other ports, and you can kind of see them, they're right here. And those two ports are actually QSFP28DD ports, which means that they're 200 gigabit per second ports. Now, what you could do, especially with these, is you could actually break these out and then have two 100 gig ports, you know, just using this, these two ports here, which gives you a total of eight 100 gig ports to go and do uplinks with. That's actually what we do in the lab. Now, if we compare that to the previous generation S5148, we only had six QSFP28 100 gig uplink ports. So we get a total of 200 gigabits per second of additional bandwidth here. Now, one of the other really cool things is let's just get inside and just kind of start showing you some of this stuff. Specifically, you can actually see that the cooling for these switch ports is a little bit different than we've seen previously. I mean, these SFP28 heat sinks on the cages, you know, we've definitely seen before. Also with the QSFP28, we've definitely seen that. But when you get to the QSFP28 DD ports, you see that there's this extra little tiny heat sink and that little tiny heat sink is really there to cool the higher speed and higher power optics. That's something that we are definitely seeing is becoming a big deal in high speed networking. And we have done the Innovium 400 gigabit times 32 port switch. We'll link that in the description. But you know, at the higher end switches, I mean, this is not necessarily a high end switch these days, but at the higher end switches, cooling is a huge deal. And you can definitely see the difference between something like this, which is kind of more of just kind of like a mainstream switch, data center switch at this point, versus some of the higher end switches that we're seeing especially when you get to this cooling. And that's kind of a fun little thing that there's this extra little heat sink here. But let's get to the star of the show, which is behind that. And that's really the Broadcom Trident 3 switch chip. Now, Broadcom is being used by Dell in this generation, the S5200 series. We've already looked at the S5232 FON and also the S5296 FON, which are the 32 port 100 gig and also the 96 25 gig ethernet port versions of you know this family. And those are are really the 3.2 terabit per second in a single direction or 6.4 terabits per second in bi-directional mode. This is really only two or four 
depending if you're looking at single or bi-directional. And the reason for that, if you just kind of do the math, you know, you get a total of 48 ports all running at 25 gig speeds, which gives you 1.2 terabits per second. Then you also get four 100 gigs, so that's 0.4, and then you get another 0.4 from the two 200 gig ports, and that gives you 0.4 plus 0.4 plus 1.2 equals two terabits per second. Now, the other thing though, is that this really is a huge upgrade compared to the previous generation, the S5100 series. In the S5148 FON, we had the Cavium, now that's Marvell X Pliant chip. And really Marvell basically bought Inovium, the one we talked about earlier, they actually bought a company to go do their kind of higher end data center switches. And they basically said, yeah, that X Pliant stuff, we're kind of gonna start phasing out, I guess, a little bit. And then, you know, Dell has also started to phase that out. If you look at like OS 10, I don't think the OS 10, like the newest release, releases are still supporting that X pliant. And so the network operating system is kind of moving that way as well. Let me know in the comments if I got that wrong, I'm doing that from memory. But the key here though, is also just the fact that the Broadcom Trident 3 is a super popular chip. It's, it's used by a ton of different manufacturers. And when we get to open networking, the support for this switch is a lot better than the previous generation. And it's a large part due to the fact that this is using that Trident 3. Now, just on the cooling here real quick, you're gonna notice that we don't like have a whole bunch of airflow guides or anything like that that we see on kind of the newer generation 12 plus terabit per second switch chips. This is kind of more of kind of the older style where you're just kind of like, yeah, we just throw air through the case, no problem. You know, it's not a big deal in terms of having to guide airflow. And so that's just kind of something that you do notice when you look at this switch compared to like higher end switches. And just something that you see that we have this big heat sink, but it's not necessarily as big as some of the ones that we're seeing in newer switches. Now, moving on, we actually over here have our IEEE 1588 board, and that comes via a microchip or micro semi ZL3363 chip that you're gonna see on this little board. We'll talk a little bit more about that, I think in the article that we'll link in the description where we kind of go over the switch. We also have block diagrams. If you wanna go check that out, you can. Now, the way that Dell makes this switch and most vendors frankly make switches these days is that there are actually multiple like kind of big PCBs in here. And you know, the first board that we've been really looking at is really kind of like the main switch board that has the Broadcom chip, switch chip on it. And then the other board that is really in most Dell switches really kind of has all of the other stuff like the management ports, the management cards also has things like the power supplies and fans all plugged into that. And that's what we're gonna look at next. You're gonna see that this board is actually on a lower level than the switch chip board. And it also will look very familiar to a lot of folks that have seen our previous reviews. If you looked at for example, our S5232 FON, this rear section looks like almost identical if it's not identical. This big board has a couple big features and that specifically connects our power supplies, it connects our fans, it also connects our management ports, like USB ports and out-of-band management ports, all that kind of stuff. And then we also have the daughter cards, both for the ASP BMC as well as our you know, Denverton CPU complex or management CPU control plane. But there is one feature that I really like that they did on this one. And that's the fact that they made the CR2032 battery very easy to replace. If you do purchase these things used, especially, I would always recommend replacing the factory battery because they get older over time. And so it was a good idea to just go and replace these things. And in the previous generations, it was kind of a little bit difficult, but here you can see it's super easy because it's just out in the open right here. Awesome job, Dell engineers. Or maybe I should say awesome job, ODM engineers. I don't I don't know, but e either way, that's actually a just small feature, but it is really nice that you are seeing in this generation. Now, let's get to some of the more kind of exciting features. Specifically, we talked about that A-Speed BMC. Now that A-Speed BMC, you know, it's kind of a standard BMC that we see in the industry. And it does a lot of, you know, the telemetry and stuff like that, uh, information that you kind of gather through that. And just one thing there is the fact that this does have the American Megatrans sticker, not American mega trends. We talked about, you know, the significance of or the non-significance of that misspelling in a previous video. If you haven't seen it, go check it out. We also have an STH main site article. We'll link those in the description along with all the other switch reviews that we're talking about. The other daughter board though is our main CPU and control plane. Now this of course has an x86 CPU. Specifically, this has an Intel Atom C3000 series processor. Now the previous generation, the S5100 series switches, those things had the Atom C2000 series processor. And so Denverton versus Rangely, I mean, that's like a five year upgrade in terms of Intel embedded processor. So you get a lot more performance and it's definitely something that, you know, just kind of a newer feature set. So it is nice to the fact that Dell is using that here. Along with our Denverton processor, we also 
get more memory and more solid state disk space. We specifically get 64 gigs of storage and we also get 16 gigabytes of memory. You're gonna see that you can see one eight gigabyte SODIM here, but there's also one on the bottom side of this board as well. Those two eight gig modules give us our 16 gigabytes total. Now, moving to the rear of the switch, let's kind of go through this real quick. We have kind of our main management block and this really has, you know, our USB port. We also have our out of band management port and also serial console port and service tags. So that's just kind of that center block. It's kind of common that we are seeing that there on this generation of Dell switches. And so that's what it is. We also have four fans. Now these are hot swappable redundant fans. And you can kind of see that you just pop these modules out in and out really easily. You will notice that we do have blue handles on here and that blue signifies that this is actually the intake side of this particular switch. Dell has both front to rear and rear to front airflow. And what this blue means is the fact that we are taking in cold air through these fans and then we will exhaust hot air out towards the ports. If these were red, we would have air go in through the port side. It would get heated up by the SFP cages, also get heated up by the switch chip and all the other components. And then it would be exhausted out of the fans in the rear and those would have red handles. That's just a quick way to kind of think about that. And in our data centers, we generally use PSU to port airflow. And so this is actually kind of what we would use. But it's not just the fans that need that kind of airflow. You also need the power supplies to be pushing air in the correct direction as well. And in this particular switch, we have 750 watt 80 plus platinum power supplies. And these are the same ones that we've seen like on that 32 port 100 gig switch that we reviewed to this generation as well. And they're just kind of our standard Dell power supplies. And that segues really well into power consumption. Now in the lab, we actually don't get all the way up to 300 watts. And mostly that's because we usually have a couple of these that are empty because, you know, systems are going in and out. And so these are not always being lit up. And then the other side to it is that in the lab, these things are not running, you know, every port running traffic 24 seven, definitely not. And we're also not using like really long reach optics because we don't need to go like a, you know, kilometers or anything like that. Cause usually we're just kind of focused on performance within a data center itself. Now Dell specs for this say that the typical power consumption is somewhere in the little over 300 watt range. And then if you do use kind of like your high end, like long reach optics, all that kind of stuff, you can go over 600 watts with this thing fully populated. So it just kind of gives you some idea in terms of the overall power consumption of a switch like this. But what I really wanted to talk about is the network operating systems. Now, of course, a lot of these switches are gonna come with Dell OS 10, but you can go and load open networking operating systems on there. And there are a couple that we typically talk about. The first one is by far the big one, which is Sonic. Now, Sonic was a project that Microsoft Azure really had worked on and then they kind of opened. And it's you know commonly used in a lot of the kind of open networking things that people are doing. That could be anything from other hyperscalers, not just Microsoft, but there are actually several hyperscalers scalers using it. You see big banks using it, enterprises. I mean, you see all kinds of organizations all over the world, even like telcos and stuff. I mean, there's tons of different folks that are using Sonic. There's a lot of investment in that in terms of the open you know, networking operating system of the future. And so it is nice that this is on the supported list for that. Now, the other one that we always look at is of course, Cumulus. And if you actually go to the Cumulus page, you will see that the switch is on these you know, hardware compatibility list. But at the same time, I think NVIDIA is really kind of taking Cumulus and making it more for the division that previously was Mellanox. So all the switches and networking gear that, that NVIDIA got as part of that Mellanox acquisition, I think really Cumulus is being kind of putting I guess more focus or there's more attention on the Mellanox switches. So I don't necessarily think that if you're gonna buy this for open networking, most folks are really gonna buy it for Cumulus. I think the vast majority of folks that see this as an open networking switch are gonna use it for Sonic. But again, because we actually have the Denver 10, so the Intel Atom C3000 series CPU, along with the Broadcom Trident 3 switch chip, this is something that you know is a fairly well supported configuration in terms of the open networking and Sonic side. That older generation, so the Dell S5100 series with the Marvell or what used to be Cavium X Pliant chip, that is definitely one that is I think a little bit older and you just aren't seeing the same level of support because it's just kind of an older solution and also just didn't have as much market share, whereas Broadcom has so much market share that you know there's more investment, I think, in supporting this. And so I think that the combination of this new switch chip and that Denver 10 CPU really leads itself more to open networking. Of course, you could use OS 10 as well, but it is just something that you have with this newer generation. I think this is a better option. Now, I know a lot of folks are gonna look at the switch and the only thing they're gonna be able to see is Megatrans, American Megatrans. 
I understand hundreds of thousands of folks have seen that on the STH main site and also on the YouTube channel. So if that's, if you don't take Dell and American Megatrends uh, offering, you know, saying that this is fine, if you don't take that at face value, then of course you're gonna have an issue with the switch and you know, there's really nothing you can do with that. At the same time, since the official position is now that that is fine, the fact that there is a misspelling on the switch, I think that we just kind of have to move forward with life. We'll link that in the description, but we're gonna keep moving forward. Overall though, I definitely see the value of the S5200 series and the S5248 FON. This is a big upgrade over the S5148 FON that we looked at previously. And just overall, I think this is a much better switch and something that I feel a lot more confident in versus the previous generation in terms of, you know, really having that Intel Denverton chip and also that Broadcom Trident 3 chip. It's just a better setup. At the same time, I will say that the reason that we only have one of these in the lab and we don't have like more of them is that what we've typically transitioned our labs to is actually using the 32 port switches and then using breakout DACs to go and take a 100 gigabit ethernet port and breaking those into four 25 gig ethernet ports. The fact of the matter is that, that for us at least, that's a much less expensive way to go and service a bunch of 25 gig ethernet units. And then also it gives us the ability to either use that 25 gig or just use 100 gig natively and so for us, that tends to be a better option. One fun note though, is the fact that on the Dell spec sheet, this is actually rated at 1.9 billion packets per second, which is higher than the 32 port version of this. And that's even though the throughput that you would get on the 32 port 100 gig switch is of course higher or the 96 port 25 gig ethernet switch. I mean, those are both higher of course than this switch, but at the same time, the actual packets per second is actually higher per Dell specs. Overall though, this switch has definitely worked well for us and we are still running OS 10 on ours, but we will be switching that to Sonic probably in this coming year. I of course always like to hear your thoughts on the hardware that we look at. So if you have any, you know, definitely drop those down in the comments. And if you like this video, well, why don't you give this video a like, click subscribe, turn on those notifications. So that way you can see whenever we come out with great new videos. As always, thanks for watching. Have an awesome day.